Hello and welcome back to Pix and Portraits. This past Halloween, we looked at the work of Czech animator Jerzy Trinka, namely his terrifying short, The Cybernetic Grandma. The Czech have a rich history of animation, be it traditional stop motion or puppet. They have given us some fascinatingly weird, sometimes horrifying films, and today I'd like to profile some of them. Now, this is not going to be super in-depth, but it should introduce you to a lot of the important uh, Czech films and animators, starting with Karel Dodal and Irene Dodalova's Ideas in Search of Light from 1938. This is an abstract film. Uh, according to the opening crawl, its intent is to symbolize the greatness of humanity and fraternity. The animators manipulate light against a black background, exploring space with different patterns and intensities. Uh, it's got great frenetic energy. Uh, reminds me a lot of Absolute Film, uh, which we talked about in our brief history of computer animation. Uh, I believe that was episode one. A couple years earlier, this pair produced Hara Bublinik along with Hermina Tilova, uh, who we will talk about more in a bit. Uh, this is similar to Ideas in Search of Light, very abstract. I think it is wild <laughs> that this incredible animation is actually just a commercial. Given budgetary constraints, uh, you know, the cost of animating, a lot of early Czech animation was just advertising. Uh, this here is for soap. Soponia soap. It's beautiful. The Czech animation industry really took off after World War II. A lot of this can be attributed to Jerzy Trinka, who brought attention when his 1946 short, Animals and Robbers, won an award at the first Khan Film Festival. This was an adaptation of the Grimm's fairy tale, Town Musicians of Bremen, where a group of animals, tired of their master's abuse, flee and become musicians. Trinka's accomplishments and influence earned him the title, the Walt Disney of Eastern Europe, and his impact reached much further than just his homeland, then known as Czechoslovakia, uh, today Slovakia and the Czech Republic. Czechoslovakia's major animation studio was Atelier of Film Tricks, or AFIT. All manner of animation was produced at AFIT, though it would later be separated into two different studios, one dedicated to puppetry and stop motion, and one to traditional animation. Trinka focused on producing puppet films like The Czech Year, his version of A Midsummer's Night's Dream, and The Hand, which we talked about in the Trinka video, uh, so check that out for more on this period. On the traditional side, there was Stenek Miller, whose work was very cartoony, in contrast to everything else we've seen so far. It's adorable. His most popular character uh, was Mole, a mole, obviously, who appeared in 63 shorts between 1957 and 2002. Mole's adventures were generally situated around an item or activity, so Mole becomes a painter, or crafts pants, uh, which was actually the first installment. Mole is hugely popular around the world, uh, not so much here in North America, but he was well known <laughs> enough uh, to the point where a stuffed animal bearing his image actually went into space in 2011. Speaking of space, this studio would animate 1973's Fantastic Planet, a co-production with France, a landmark animated film <laughs> featuring a strange planet with strange creatures, aliens, uh, very weird and very on brand uh, for Czech animation. Now, pretty much all of this was produced out of the capital Prague, but there was also a studio in Zelin in the Moravia region of Czechoslovakia. Uh, that's where Miller began his career. It was also home to Karel Zaman and Hermina Terlova. Zaman was a special effects wizard. <laughs> he is often compared to George Milliers uh, due to his incredible trick photography, uh, the way he utilized and blended animation with live action. His most famous film was 1958's Invention for Destruction, dubbed and released in America as The Fabulous World of Jules Verne in 1961. It's possibly the most famous Czech film uh, of all time, uh, certainly the most successful financially. It was based off of several stories, again written by sci-fi pioneer Jules Verne, namely Facing the Flag. Aesthetically, it was inspired by the original illustrations that accompanied Verne's stories, line engravings by artists like Edward Ryu, uh, very steampunky. To give it this distinct look, hatching was actually painted onto the costumes and set pieces, which are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this was produced to give the viewer the feeling of stepping into this world, and by all accounts, a success. Invention for Destruction was not the first or last time Zaman attempted to capture an aesthetic and bring still artwork to life. 
His first feature, The Treasure of Bird Island, was an adaptation of a Persian fairy tale produced in the style of Persian miniatures. In 1962, he produced Baron Prezel, also known as the fabulous Baron Munchausen, based on the legends of Baron Munchausen, <laughs> taking inspiration from the engravings of Gustav Dorr. Zaman's work is very eclectic, employing various types of animation, stop-motion traditional puppetry, which is very much a theme <laughs> in Czech animation as a whole. Zaman broke into animation in the 1940s when he was assistant to Hermina Turlova, where Jerzy Trinka is credited with popularizing Czech animation. I think it's fair to say Turlova was instrumental in cultivating it. We saw some of her work earlier, from the 1930s, uh, her advertising work, along with her husband, Karol Dodo. Turlova was responsible for the earliest Czech animation produced for entertainment. In 1944, she directed Ferda Maravnitz. Uh, this film is a lot like a bug's life, with an ant saving the insect world, only fighting against a spider rather than a grasshopper. Turlova had been making puppets since childhood, and it shows. Her characters are cartoony, uh, they have a ton of personality, very expressive, the short is stop motion, uh, very fluid animation. Uh, I love this. Her early career coincided with the Second World War and Germany's occupation of Czechoslovakia. Uh, her husband, Dodol, actually fled to America, but Turlova stayed and continued producing animation. One of her most iconic films from this period was Revolution in Toyland, uh, though it's known by a few names, uh, Toy Revolt, Revolt of the Toys, uh, I guess different spins on the translation. <laughs> this was produced in 1946, the same year as The Spring Man and the SS uh, was released, uh, which we talked about on Animation Propaganda, and it's very similar in tone, with a group of toys coming alive to nearly beat a Nazi to death. Tirlova would make the much calmer Yukol Bafka the following year, where toys again come to life, but this time to comfort a crying baby. Jumping ahead a few decades, we see her work in beautiful color. 1962's Devia Klebeik saw the autonomous creation of wool dolls. I think Terlova uses textures uh, very interesting in these later films, uh, extremely detailed, they look amazing. The design of these birds <laughs> in 1968's Venuchny Stromachuk, a uh, Christmas tree. The design of everything here, uh, really. The short is also amazing. She even revisited one of my favorite, uh, Ferda, her ant character in a trio of films in 1977. Uh, just fantastic work. The golden age of Czech animation lasted until the 1960s when a new generation of animators emerged, led by Jan Schwenkmeyer. There are a few ways I would describe Schwenkmeyer's work. Uh, surreal, <laughs> nightmare-inducing, uh, it is often very bizarre and unsettling. Here we are seeing his ode to childhood, Jabberwocky, from 1971. Based off Lewis Carroll's poem of the same name, it presents images that are evocative of childhood, so dolls, toys, in such a way to produce feelings of loss. Uh, a pair of clothes moves, uh, but no one is in it. In 1983's Dimensions of Dialogue, Schwenkmeyer explores the difficulties of communication. It's divided into three parts, Dialogue Vichny, Dialogue Vashnivi, and Dialogue Viser Pavajiki. Factual, passionate, and exhaustive discussion. In the first segment, figures comprised of food and household items consume and regurgitate each other over and over again. Part 2 sees lovers made of clay absorbing and morphing together erotically <laughs> before fighting and ultimately melting. And in the final part, two heads with the ability to stick objects out of their mouths do so, but fail to line up in any way that is meaningful or productive. Schwenkmeyer was big on bodies, or body horror. We see it most blatantly in Darkness Light Darkness, in which a body puts itself together, making many quote-unquote mistakes before achieving its accepted form. These include eyeballs on fingertips, uh, which is a sentence, <laughs> and head atop feet. Upon completion, the body is stuck uncomfortably in a box, barely able to move. The Czech film, and therefore the animation industry, had long been operated by the state. This ended alongside the Soviet Union, and with privatization came less resources and funding for animator projects. As a result, the industry struggled. Still, amazing work continued and continues to be produced, like that of Mikhaila Pavlatova. 
some of her work, uh, actually most of her work, is not safe for work, but I can show you some of 1991's Ratsi Ratsi Ratsi, Words Words Words. It all takes place in a bar, with the patrons conversing. Like Dimensions of Dialogue, it explores how humans communicate. The passing of information is presented in a variety of ways, uh, as a gas that changes color as it is passed person to person, kind of like a game of telephone. One person talks to someone in numbers, and they answer in words and news headlines, and uh, yeah, eventually it goes to some pretty dark uh, and dirty places. Despite its quality, a lot of Czech animation is hard to track down online, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what it is all about. This was not meant to be exhaustive, and I am no expert, so feel free to chime in in the comments if you have anything to add. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon. That's the only place to see Century of Schlock, where we look at 100 years of cartoon smut and adult animation. $5 a month gets you access to that and dozens of other exclusive videos, patreon.com slash pixamportraits. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.